And today on the bench there's a monitor out of an old arcade machine. This dates back to the sort of mid 90s. Don't know the condition of it. It's very clean. I'm told it's been jet washed. Hmm. So I've left it for a healthy few months before I even put it on the bench. And now today is time to test it. What could go wrong? I don't know who else is worried about this repair, but there could be all manner of things wrong with this. Uh, Favourites would be, obviously, dry joints. It's from the 90s, why not? The line output transformer could be bad, that's very common as well. I think, fortunately, you can still get them. A bit expensive though now. The favourite is to replace all the caps, but before we go <laughs> throwing capacitors at this, let's find out if it works at all. And this one's actually been modified. It's got these sort of screen flip switches. Oh, this one's a bit loose. But yeah, very convenient to don't know which way up your game's going to run. And of course I haven't got the right leads to these because I'm not a monitor repair shop. I'm going to put some healthy distance between that thing and me turning it on. <laughs> Here goes. Well look at it sitting there in silence. Nothing glowing, nothing ticking. Hmm. I think it's dead. I suppose you want to check these fuses just to <laughs> make sure. Well, that one's fine. And this one lurking at the back. Oh. Sort of reading that. Just fetch this fuse out. Look how crusty it is. It's not actually blown, it's just dirty. Give me a little bit of a bit of a wipe on here. Let's clean those ends up. I guess this is what happens after 30 years and a garden hose pipe on it. Let's measure that now. Much better. In case you're wondering, it was just that crusty fuse. Let's just test it again. Power on. And still nothing. Well, the main DC supply comes out of here for all this circuitry down this end. Pops out in these two wires here. This red and the brown wire. It's a bit tight to get some probes on there, so they follow and turn up on this board here. Which is a bit easier to get the probes on. Get that on there. I'm using these clips because I don't want to be putting my hands in this when it powers up. Not a chance. Oh, is there another ground around here? Oh, over there. That'll do. Let's see what this 128 volt supply looks like. Well, <laughs> it's a bit high if anything. But it's there. Definitely there. With that amount of nothing happening, that's about as much testing I can do with it still in the chassis. So I need to fetch it out, which involves disconnecting the HT lead. Yeah. Well, there's no way I'm getting a belt off this, so <laughs> I was going to improvise a discharging tool, just connect an earth onto this long screwdriver, just connect it to this braiding on there, and then sort of slide it under. Wait for the crackle. Oh, and there's no crackle. Hmm. Oh, here goes. My favourite part, try and wrestle the clip off. Yeah, what's going on there? Oh, it's quite a big hook, that is. Oh, it's, there we go. I'll get another earth lead on here. Onto there. Because <laughs> I don't trust this not to grow the charge back. And I'm going to leave this shorted out. That's about the safest way to have that. There should be two screws in there, but there's only one. Never mind. Oh, that crusty self tapper. Yeah. You can't actually lift this board out <laughs> because it's trapped in the frame. So this frame actually has a design where these nuts on here 
we'll have these bolts on here can be undone enabling it all to swing out of the way rather thoughtfully someone's put a connector block in the in the ground wire that's very thoughtful of them let's disconnect this plug here these are from the scan coils and in theory this should just lift away well about that far ah yes because someone's put these on there <laughs> well let's take this off the this drive board off carefully it's always worth a good visual inspection of these I mean at least it's clean but there's some funny <laughs> corrosion going on down here yeah it's all furry it's like the lead it's turned to like lead oxide yeah I'm not sure it's a great idea to uh, get these wet I don't see much wrong with this just to check the bits it's where the heavy parts are that tend to go around here this is the where the line output transformer goes that's a favourite one for cracking and anywhere that gets hot <laughs> which is quite a few places on these old monitors but yeah it doesn't look bad hmm there's three circuit boards on this monitor so we've got the first board here which is like the input board we've got the video signal and the power comes in it feeds 128 volts onto this board. This circuit's working. We got a voltage. It's about 150 odd volts. It's a bit high, so some attention needs to be given here. It's apparently adjustable, but I did have a look. It's adjusted all the way down, so not ideal. <laughs> Unless the pot works backwards, of course. We'll look at that later. I traced in red where this 128 volt supply goes, and it actually pops out on the on the plug where the deflection coils go I mean, this is to stop you we're powering it up with things unplugged then it goes up to the flyback transformer and it also goes through this resistor here yes that's worth checking that the 10 ohm resistor R98 so one wire there one there 9.3 ohms good enough because that then feeds power up to this circuit here and this is a bit of a switch mode power supply, one of these chicken and egg things. So I think it takes sort of like an, an inductive kick off the flyback transformer. And then there should be enough there for this to power the rest of the circuit up. Let's power this up on the bench supply. Now I know it's not switching. So I don't want that 24 kilovolts anywhere near me. I think I'm going to isolate the two boards, or at least the power. I'm going to disconnect this red wire here. came out nicely and we saw in the drawer insert in this connector here the middle two pins are in fact a link so just going to put a crocodile clip from there to there hope they don't short the other pins out before I stick any voltages on just in case this thing miraculously fixes itself I'm going to bury that under there so it doesn't bite me so I need 128 volts of DC so I'm going to use this and uh, set it for about, what did I say, 128 volts? It's pretty close already. Good enough. Let's connect some test leads into it. So the ground can go on this heat sink, I just found out. Also, 128 volts goes on this red wire. And it's a little bit safer to poke around with like that. Especially with the anno cap out of my way. And let's turn that on. And uh, 20 milliamps. Not totally dead. I can have a poke around in here now. I'm, <laughs> I'm intrigued to see if we've got the 12 volt supply. Because that comes off this 128 volts. Go from ground here to where it says 12 volts. And we got, yeah, absolutely nothing. Just reminding myself how this went again. So the power comes in through this red trace through the link. We've got the link in. Then it goes up to the flyback transformer, but it also goes here. So we should have 
128 volts on R94 and R97. Let's find those. And uh, here they are. R94, R97. So, R94, one end, and I don't know which end it is, has got a 128 volts on. What's the other side got? Not much. <laughs> 2.3 volts. Hmm, interesting. R97 here, 128 volts on that side, at this side. Oh, 128 volts on both sides. Okay, okay. Where's it going next? R97, which is the white one. So you've got 128 volts on both sides, so it goes to this transformer, TH2. And it's driven by a transistor TR10. Yeah, more suspicious of transistors. They normally go short circuit, but no, I don't know. There's not enough current on here to make me believe that. Let's bet it out. And there is TR10 hiding down there. Let's just bend its legs a little bit. Now, I'll do a diode test on this, because it is a bipolar transistor. And the base is normally on the, it's like the first pin, so we'll go that in, because we are looking at it from the back. So on the collector, 0.74 volt drop there on the emitter. Yeah, 0.22. Hmm. Hang on a minute. That transistor sits across this transformer winding. In my world, transformer winding is very low resistance. That's not right. And this is the transformer TH2. So, what is the resistance here? Point one seven four ohms. That looks like a winding to me. So this side of it. Aye aye. That don't look like a winding. This transformer's got an open winding. But why? It does look a bit more of this white crusty corrosion. Let's fetch it out. Although, <laughs> how do I know which way round it goes? Yeah, there's no... There's nothing on the board to say. And it looks very symmetrical. Oh, well, the thick winding goes at this end, so we'll mark this up. Thick. Yeah, we'll fetch that out now. Where is it up here? There we are. Let's have a look at this thing then. Why is it faulty? Yeah, I might need the microscope for this. What's going on with the windings on this? Looking under here, you can see the primary winding is there, soldered to the little post. Same on there. Looks a bit crusty, mind you, but it's on. So the other side then, we've got a very fine wire there. It goes to here. Yeah, look how fine that is, which is typical. Um, that's that should come up on here, but yeah, it's gone. Looks suspiciously crusty though, that's a concern. I'm wondering if this wire has corroded away. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. Don't jet wash your telly, people. This transformer's going to have to come apart because. I'm not confident I'll get a spare, unless it's come out of another monitor, but uh, we'll see if we can rescue it. It's got a plastic clip on there, so this comes apart quite easily. Look at that. Oh, it falls apart. Don't worry people, that's normal. <laughs> There's remnants of a paper core there. Look at that paper wrapper. That's to produce an air gap, because these are power transformers, so this is your like ferrite core. So it's important there is a tiny gap, so however thick that is, needs to go back. I made this drawing over here, 
It's pretty good, isn't it? You like that? That's good. So I need to note the orientation of the winding. This winding here is wound anti-clockwise. So I don't know how many turns, so we have to unwind it. So I'm just going to snip this off here. No, oh. <laughs> easier said than done. So that's cut that, and this one. Okay, we're going to get counting. That's one. Cool. Two. Three. Four. Five. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. And what wire is it? Let's just measure that. How thick is it? 0.45 mil diameter. That's like 26 gauge ish. It's the next winding I'm worried about. So if I can find the end of this winding. It's very fine wire, we know that. So. Hmm. Be really nice if I don't damage it and can recover it. You know, if it loses like one turn, it's probably not a problem. But it looks to me like they've put a like a cushioning layer on there, I don't know why, like a fibery layer and then put an epoxy tape all over it, it's like fiberglass. But nonetheless, the isopropyl alcohol appears to be slightly, slightly weakening it. <laughs> it's still a messy job. Yeah, I was hoping it would just peel off in one go. <laughs> I've just found the start and the end of the windings. So this end here looks like it goes. It's an egg. Looks like it goes deep inside the transformer winding, whereas the missing one has now appeared. And as we can see, this is on the top. This is the outer layer. So that's good to know. So from that end, this is also wound anti-clockwise. That's good to know. So they're wound in the same direction. Which makes sense because most winding machines do just sort of spin round and round and round. Hmm. Now this isn't coming off nicely at all. So to count the turns, I'm thinking I'm actually going to just cut them off one by one. So I'm going to slice through some of all these stragglers hanging on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Plus five, that's twelve. Twelve layers off. We'll have a little look at this. If we've got no more breakages, no, I don't think we have. Yeah. Put it on the winding machine. So just pop that bobbin on there. That's <laughs> what so it doesn't come off. Okay. So is that going the right way? Yes. So I'll just gently unwind this now. And this will keep count. So adding all that up gives 631 turns of 0.1 mil diameter wire. Quite a lot. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Start the winding and hope for the best. Start gently. What 
What's that? 70 turns. <laughs> per, <laughs> per length of it. Just going to solder those on whilst it's <laughs> stood in this position. Let's check with the multimeter that we've uh, actually <laughs> managed to solder through the varnish. Ah, 45 ohms. We have. Load that back in. Next stage is to put some insulation on that. I'm going to put some uh, capped on tape around this. That was a bit fiddly. Try and wind it the right way. <laughs> it should fit nicely in the bobbin. that'll do. Solder the ends on here. Takes a while because you've got to melt the lacquer off the wire. Yeah, seen it bubble there. That's putting the air gap in there. It's about 0.1 mil, but if I measured some capped on, it's hmm. Half that. Need two layers of that. So we should have one that's slightly thicker than the other. So that's 11.28. And this one should be 11.38 hopefully. Look at that. Beautiful. Just going to put a little dab of glue just on the one. That's just a little spot, mind you. We've got our air gap at the bottom. Just put it in through there. Once that's done, you can just put the plastic clip back over it. Should hold it all. Together. Let's just put that transformer back in. Nice tight fit. Right, there's a good chance that that transformer was the main fault with this and it may burst into life, you don't know. But now's a good time to sort out that 128 volt regulator circuit. See what's wrong there. We've well, got 150 volts going into this now and the output's 148 volts. If I adjust this pot, which is all the way up, uh, it's making hardly any difference whatsoever. Hmm. There's some Zener diodes on here that I want to check out. Let's measure the voltage drop, hopefully in circuit. Now this diode here should be 7.5 volt drop. Look at that. <laughs> it's perfect. The regulator is quite a simple circuit on this, so 
first of all, I'm suspicious that this potentiometer could be a bit dicky. Especially 2.2k, and it is 2.2k. Yeah, uh, one end's not connected to anything. So this is actually just a variable resistor which goes to the ground here. But yeah, it's giving me good readings. Well, I've come to the conclusion that I am chasing my tail with this. I've just realised that the regulator is bypassed by a massive resistor. It's a 200 ohm resistor right across here. 30 watts it's rated for. Until you've loaded that up, this thing won't reduce the voltage whatsoever. So, I think I'm just going to power it up. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's some holes somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> just to engage in. Yeah, something like that. I've got it all hooked up now to the straight into the mains. I've got a signal generator ready. Moment of truth. Oh, we have a picture. <laughs> so far, nothing's gone bang. <laughs> Results. I'll see if I can find something that this likes. <laughs> oh. That looks close. There we go. CGA apparently. 15 kilohertz. Must like that. Just this vertical frequency to get it stable. That's a bit dicky this is. I've just had this running for quite a while and in the dark so I can appreciate the beauty of a CRT all over again. What I have noticed is as this has warmed up the vertical rolling has stopped and it's working properly so I'm pretty sure that's classic signs of dodgy caps. So I'm going to change just a few. Of course that does mean I've got to strip the board out again and now we know there's high voltages in there. <laughs> Discharge time. Let's tease that under there and listen for the crackle. we we'll get another ground connection again, like I did before. So I don't trust these to stay discharged. And you know how much I hate this part. <laughs> Always a struggle. connect this clip into there. That's better. Well this TDA2653 chip here is the vertical amplifier and all this circuitry around here is going to be upsetting it which is why I couldn't get the vertical lock on there. And all these capacitors around here these are very likely going to be involved with this chip so place all these see if we can make it behave again. Start this little 100 mic cap over here Clean the hole up. The new caps are always a lot smaller. I suppose that's progress for you. Pop the new caps in. 2.2 mic forward one there. And we have a 10 mic. And then a thousand mic forwards here.
this one I'm that confident I'm going to put a few screws in or well, the ones it came with at least there's a few new caps being fitted it's all back together moment of truth let's knock the lights off for a better look Beautiful. Let's run through a few patterns. Checkerboard looks fine. Colour bars. Dots. All looks all great. It's all great and straight. Do you know when you turn this off you get a bit of an analogue Microsoft Windows? There it is. It's been a few years since I've done SCRT repair so bit of fun. <laughs> Catch you next time.